Welcome to Android Weekly on Butterscotch.com, the show that corrals the world of Android to find all the news that matters to you, or at least to me, I'm Edward Crispin. On this week's show, Amazon sets the wire afire, Android gives developers an ice cream sandwich playbook, and SanDisk backs up your Android's SD card to the cloud. But first we pay the bills. Hover.com is the easiest way to buy domain names and do more with them. More meaning stuff like creating stealth forwards where your domain name stays in the address bar no matter where you send your visitors. Like creating your own shortened URLs just like the ones we use in Android Weekly. Get 10% off domain registration by going to hover.com slash android. And now, on with the show. Word of Amazon's Fire tablet lit up the tech news wires. It seems everyone was just waiting for a tablet contender to the crown. Android tablets are making some inroads. Last week's episode of Android Weekly will attest to that, but the iPad is still the incumbent. HP's touchpad sell-off demonstrated that people will buy just about any tablet if the price is right. Well, it looks like the price of Amazon's offering is indeed right. $199 for the top-end Kindle Fire. A couple of other Kindles were announced in paving the way for the Big Fire reveal. However, this is Android Weekly, not eReader Weekly, so we'll leave that discussion to someone else. Suffice it to say, the base level Kindle is so inexpensive at $80 as to become a commodity item. The Fire drops on November 15th, US only. There are legal issues around Amazon's cloud outside of the good old US of A. Sorry, international community. Judging by the response thus far, it'd be a good idea to pre-order the Fire from Amazon if you're interested, sight unseen. Here's what we know. The Fire is Wi-Fi only. It runs Android at its base, but the UI and the App Store, music syncing, video playback, and so on are all Amazon. No cameras, no GPS, 8 gigs of internal storage and a 7-inch screen, and an as-yet unspecified dual-core processor. All told, it looks remarkably like the BlackBerry Playbook, probably because it's designed by the same firm. We've been eagerly anticipating more news of Google's Android ice cream sandwich. This is the upcoming newest build of the OS, and it brings together smartphone and tablet development, previously separated into gingerbread and honeycomb forks. The newest Android gets a full version number jump into 4 dot. Given some of the colossal improvements we saw in the jump from the 1 dot builds and into the 2 dot, it'll be an exciting release. However, developing an OS that works as well on smartphones as it does on tablets, or vice versa, is no mean feat. Now, Android is showing would-be developers how it's done. How they plan to make one OS work across multiple screen sizes from the smallest smartphones to the 10.1 inch tablets. Turns out the answer comes in the form of fragments. Now we can't imagine Android is oblivious to the fact that it's trying to fix fragmentation issues with fragments, but I digress. Rather than shoehorning tablet apps onto the smaller smartphone screen, or upscaling smartphone apps for the tablet, the user experience will change depending on the platform. Have a look at this handy graphic. If you're on a smartphone, tapping on a so-called activity will push you to the fragment you seek. For example, an activity like tapping on an email preview in your inbox will push you across to the fragment, the email body, on the next page. In the tablet UX, though, tapping on an activity updates the fragment that, thanks to the larger screen real estate of your tablet, is already present on the screen. In short, Ice Cream Sandwich does what Android always should have done, offer a familiar user experience on both the tablet and smartphone without sacrificing either. Backing up your Android device really is as simple as logging into your Google account on initial setup. All your contacts, apps, emails, passwords, Wi-Fi settings, and so on are backed up to your Google account settings, assuming you left the option to back up my data in the privacy settings menu untouched. What about pictures, videos, downloaded files, app data stored on your SD card or internal storage, though? SanDisk has released what it believes to be a valuable backup addition to your Android phone. The Memory Zone Android app just released in beta lets you back up anything on your phone to the cloud. Music, videos, pictures, and so on. You can also set a full backup schedule where your phone will incrementally back up any and all of your files to the cloud. Until Android comes up with its own way to back up everything on your phone, Memory Zone looks like the best backup bet we've seen. Well, that's all the news that's fit to Google for this week. For full show notes in this episode, video, gadget, and app reviews, and much more, visit Butterscotch.com. Until next week, I'm Andrew Moore Crispin.